I am compelled to now um, ask for members' statements. We'll start with the member for Bay of Quinte. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning, everyone. I rise today to tell you about a graduation that occurred a little bit over a week ago in my home riding of Bay of Quinte from a great program called Elevate Plus. This program was funded through the Skills Development Fund and facilitated by Loyalist College and Quinty Economic Development, and it helps job seekers who have faced obstacles in their lives, whether it be mental illness, drug addiction, or contact with the justice system, to build their skills, increase their confidence, and prepare themselves for a career in our booming manufacturing sector. Over four weeks in class and four weeks on the job, these students develop into employees who are ready to work in any of our great manufacturers in the Bay of Quinty region. I will say it was incredibly moving to hear their stories about the changes that they've made in their lives and their desire and commitment to be better people, better family members, and better members of our community. We are so thankful for this program, which graduated eight people in its 39th cohort to come through Elevate Plus. Over the years, that means in our community, hundreds of people have changed their lives, have gotten back to work, and have made a difference across our community. Thank you to Elevate Plus all of the teachers and staff that make it possible, Loyalist College and Quinney Economic Development, as well as the Skills Development Fund for this great program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members' statements, the member for London West. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Today is Child Care Worker and Early Childhood Educator Appreciation Day, an annual opportunity to celebrate the commitment, skills, and hard work of the people who care for Ontario's kids. As MPP for London West, I'm especially grateful to the dedicated caring professionals who work in child care centres and licensed home child care across our city. Their commitment allows London parents to go to work, put food on the table, and keep our economy going, knowing their children will be safe, nurtured and engaged. The theme for this year's day is Worth More, which highlights the urgency of ensuring childcare workers and ECEs receive the respect and resources they deserve so they can provide the care our children need and deliver the services that families rely on. Speaker, London West families have been struggling under this government with the rising cost of living, and the promise of $10 a day childcare provided a glimpse of hope, but the Conservatives' failure to develop a workforce strategy to, retrain, to retain and recruit ECEs and child care workers means $10 a day is not even close to a reality for the almost 5,000 kids waiting for a space in London. Speaker, will the Premier show his appreciation today for the child care workers and ECEs who fuel Ontario's economy by giving them the decent work, good pay and fulfilling careers they deserve? Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. This past Sunday, October 20th, I was at a fundraising event at Hundred Acre Brewery. There was a band shell set up and a number of local artists all joined together to raise money for one of our local charities. We had local artists Mike Kidd, Sarah Jane Riley, Brad Renault, and Jocelyn Buford there to entertain us and keep us engaged as we raised money for an organization called Right to Heal. Hmm. Right to Heal delivers an indigenous land-based cognitive behavioral therapy approach to addictions treatment. Wow. It's all based around the research of Peggy Shaughnessy. Peggy is just completing her PhD in addictions research right now at Trent University. And the Red Path program that she delivers through Right to Heal is making a difference in my community in the fight against the opioid crisis. The approach is a non-medical approach where someone learns why they're addicted so that they can get to the underlying issue, learn how they can take personal responsibility for their own well-being, and find strategies to work for them to avoid the destructive behavior that put them in the position they're in. We're seeing tremendous success with this program. With addictions, there is no silver bullet. Not a single approach will work for everyone, but this approach is seeing tremendous results for many who have gone through her program. Peggy's program has changed the trajectory of the lives of so many people in our community. Thank you, Peggy, for developing the program. Thank you for introducing it to me, and thank you for your patience as I worked to find funding so you could save the lives of so many people in our community. Here, here. Thank you, thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. This summer, while the Premier was busy telling people struggling with homelessness to get off their <coughs> 
posteriors and get a job, my constituents in Aspen Towers were desperately trying to hold on to their housing. Their brand new landlord has been trying to evict them, hundreds of tenants, issuing eviction notices just three days after he took ownership of the building, telling people they had only five days over a long weekend to make a decision. This government has abandoned my constituents and renters like them. They have refused to implement real rent control, which would take away the incentive from bad landlords to evict tenants just so they can jack up the rent. They have refused to levy stiffer penalties on landlords who ignore the rules, provide false information, or unfairly evict tenants. They have refused to proactively enforce the rules, leaving it up to tenants to do it themselves, and then refuse to fix the landlord-tenant board so that these tenants can have swift justice. The Aspen Towers tenants in Ottawa, West Nepean include families with children, people working two jobs just to pay for rent, and seniors who were finally able to retire after a lifetime of work. None of them will be able to afford rent if they are turfed onto the Ottawa housing market. They will have to work three jobs. They will have to go back to work in their 70s. Some of them are warning that they will have to live in their cars. Instead of blaming people who are struggling because of his government's failures, the Premier should get off his posterior and make sure that everyone in this province can afford a place to call home. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The summer break was very productive. I managed to attend over 220 meetings announcements, community events, new business opening, in addition to attending standing committees meetings. I was inform it was informative to meet and listen to the daily challenges and concerns of Scarborough Aging Court residents, businesses, and organizations. I visited Sir Ernest McMillan Public School to distribute backpacks filled with school supplies to students in need. I made time to chat with the students and help them overcome some of the issues they face. I also had the privilege of meeting Dr. Norman Batun, CIS's Berbella All Girls Robotic Team to help with their fundraising as they prepare to represent Canada in the first global challenge in Athens, Greece. Among the highlights of the summer recess were the Blackstone Foundation's grand reopening of the Chesterley Community Library, which was established by a $199,700 grant from Ontario Terrain Foundation. I also was managed to organize two barbecues for our residents. Another crucial event I attended with the Minister of Health was the announcement of allocation of $1,478,000 to the Taibu Community Health Center and $1,325,000 to Scarborough Center for Healthy Communities to ensure our residents get access to primary care services. The grand opening of a Scarborough Health Network Mental Health Center in Scarborough with Premier Ford and Minister Jones was a historic first. These are some of the events which kept me busy during our summer break. Thank you. The member for Hamilton Mount will come to order. The next member statement, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to share a story of significance, a chapter of Canadian history that is often overlooked, the British home child that began 155 years ago. This child migration scheme was a government program that sent 125,000 poor and desolate children from ages six months to 18 years from the UK and Ireland to Canada as indentured laborers to work on farms and as domestic servants from 1869 to 1939. This program was born out of a desire to alleviate poverty in Britain and to provide a solution for the children deemed unwanted and neglected. Many home children face harsh conditions, including abuse, forced labour and neglect. They worked on farms and in factories and they helped build communities across this country. Their resilience played a crucial role in shaping the agricultural, industrial and urban landscapes of Toronto, of Toronto Canada, Ontario and beyond. 
They are remarkable heroes, and that's why on September 28th of each year, we celebrate and commemorate the British Home Child Day. Today, many Canadians tra can trace their ancestry back to these children who played and laid a foundation of our rich and diverse and growing nation. It's estimated that 12 per cent of the Canadian population, 4 million people, are British home children descendants, including Ontario Premiers and MPPs. As we reflect on their experiences, we must consider how far we have come and how much further we need to go in safeguarding the welfare of children today. In modern Ontario, our province is failing as one child dies every three days in government care. Today in the Legislature, we will be joined by descendants and families of the British Home Child Program who have travelled from across Ontario to attend a reception which I'm co-hosting with the British Consulate General in Toronto. I invite all members to join us after question period to celebrate with them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Ajax. Thank you, Speaker. I, over the summer, I did over 240 events. Wow. One of my favorite ones was on October 17th. Actually, that's not over the summer, but anyways, <laughs> that's another one. In the great riding of Ajax in, the, in uh, on, uh, Rotary Park, we unveiled an installation in partnership with Operation Whiteheart through the advocacy of Michelle Cook, who, a constituent who lost her son Josh to suicide. Operation White Heart began in New Brunswick and is an awareness project focused on promoting conversation around mental health and suicide. While utilizing basic landscaping supplies such as mulch and white stone to create a white heart, this was started by Robert Lothan. This heart crafted with care and intention stands as a symbol of compassion, understanding and hope. It serves an important reminder for connection needed to open conversations about mental health and the unwavering support we must offer to each other. As we honor the memories of those who have left us too soon, let us also commit to recreating a world where every person feels seen, heard, and valued. I want to give my thanks to Councillor Marilyn, Marilyn Crawford and the, the, uh, the councillors from Ajax who worked to make this the first operation White Heart Sculpture in the province of Ontario. I encourage members of the House to learn about this initiative and maybe get one in their riding. As Robert said at the unveiling, it will not solve the issue, but just maybe somebody will see one and think twice about taking their lives. Thank you very much. The next member's statement, the member for Scarborough Guildwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I stand before you to share the stories of the people I represent in Scarborough Guildwood. Over the past 19 weeks, I had the privilege of meeting with my constituents, listening to their challenges and understanding the issues that affect their daily lives. Vacation was not a priority for me. I was in the field every day making a difference and giving them hope for a better tomorrow. Many families are facing food insecurity and are struggling to put food on the table. Food bank visits are on the rise with one in seven people at the food banks in Scarborough. Job opportunities remain limited and many of my constituents are finding it increasingly difficult to secure stable, well-paying jobs. Access to health care remains a significant concern as over 19,000 of my constituents are without a family doctor. Aside from that, I am very proud to say that I have participated in over 200 events throughout Scarborough and Scarborough Guildwood, connecting with residents, community leaders, and organizations dedicated to making a difference. Each event has reinforced my commitment to advocating for the Scarborough community. We need a government that will provide solutions. They deserve a government that will stand up for the people of Ontario. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Two weeks ago, we celebrated Thanksgiving, and my team and I had our annual Community Leaders Award and Thanksgiving dinner at the Oasis Convention Centre in Lakeview. We had a great turnout of over 300 people to celebrate the harvest and to recognize some very special community leaders from across Mississauga Lakeshore. That includes Barry Gilbert, an indigenous elder and the founder of the Eagle Spirits of the Great Waters, who has done so much to promote Indigenous art, culture, and a spirit of healing along our waterfront, on Orange Shirt Day and throughout the year. 
We honored my friend Michelle Kana, the founder of the Saidan Food Bank, the only food bank in Ontario that operates 365 days each year and helps seniors and others with special needs. And as we celebrate Small Business Week, we recognize a small business owner like Joe LaRue, the founder of Amario's Pizza, who has supported our local festivals, youth hockey teams, food banks, and charities since 1990. And I want to thank David Zara from City News Toronto for joining us as well to help us tell some of these uplifting stories. And I'm thankful from, for Barry, Michelle, and Joe for all of their spirit of Ontario across our province. And I just want to thank them for being part of Mississauga Lakeshore and the special evening. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I'm honoured today to rise representing the wonderful people of Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Speaker, as you know, I represent a very large riding consisting of many different and diverse communities. And while I'd love to talk about them all today, I'm going to focus on one area, the town of Greater Napanee. Greater Napanee has several new and expanding industries announced with the support and leadership of this government. We've seen a major expansion of the Goodyear Tire Plant with hundreds of new high-paying jobs, a new battery storage facility that will help to enhance and stabilize the power grid for everyone, and the implementation of a new health home program that will lead to every single resident there having access to primary care. The high note speaker, however, was the Greater Napanee receiving almost $35 million wow. to build a new wastewater facility through this government's Housing Enabling Water Systems Fund that will allow for the development of, of over 3,000 new homes wow. in Greater Napanee. Wow. As the mayor of Greater Napanee, Terry Richardson, put it best when he said, this is game changing. And I left out the expletive on that. <laughs> Speaker, this is the type of work that this government, under the leadership of the Premier, has been doing all across this province during the summer session. While the opposition may talk about how long the break was, for this government, there is no break in our work to keep building Ontario. Whether here at Queen's Park or working in the ridings all across the province, we are and will continue to get it done for the people of Ontario. Thank you very much. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I'm going to recognize the Minister of Tourism, Culture and, and Gaming on a point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I, I, a point of order, I just want to correct my record uh, yeah, from uh, my answer yesterday to the Bay of Quinney. I said the fine Minister of Sport had won a Great Cup championship. I was wrong. He's won four championships. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good that we got that straight note.